and the Falcon 9 is now moving faster than the speed of sound. Coming up next, the vehicle will be passing through Max Q, which is the point in the mission profile. Max Q. Right on schedule, the vehicle has experienced the greatest amount of aerodynamic pressure that it will see on ascent. Now coming up next, we'll have several events happening in quick succession, starting with main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, second engine start one, and then our boost back burn. Main engine cutoff, or MECO for short, is where all nine Merlin 1D engines shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage sep. When and the first chill has started. and second stages will separate from each other. We also heard that call out from Mission Control that we're chilling our second stage engine in preparation for startup. The MVAC engine on the second stage will light for the first time during second engine start one, which we'll hear called out as SES1. This engine burn will last for several minutes and propel the second stage and the payload to their intended orbit. Our boost back burn will assist the first stage in returning to its recovery location at landing zone four, also at Vandenberg Space Force Base. In addition to these major events, the fairing halves will separate about 30 seconds after SES-1. So keep an eye out for all of the, those events coming up here in just a couple of seconds. But as a reminder, we won't Main have... engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. Stage one boost back start up. had confirmation now of Miko stage separation and boost back burn startup and are getting incredible views from our tracking camera right now. Now as a reminder we're not showing any views of the Falcon 9 second stage or payload today at the request of our customer. We are however standing by for that call out for fairing deployment. Fairing separation confirmed. Right on on schedule. Both, parent, both payload fairing have supporting today's mission are flight proven. One half is flying for its 17th time and the other for its fourth. We will of course be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back to earth with our recovery vessel go beyond. Stage one boost back shutdown. And we have confirmation of boost back burn shutdown. We are currently at T plus three minutes and 30 seconds into tonight's mission following a successful liftoff from Vandenberg Both vehicles Space. are following nominal trajectories. Good call out for trajectories. Our nominal liftoff time today was 11.49 p.m. Pacific time. And coming up in just a few minutes will be the entry burn of the Falcon 9 booster as it continues on its journey towards landing zone four. This entry burn is the second of three burns that Falcon 9 will complete in its descent. Now, as a reminder, tonight's mission is a return to launch site recovery, which involves landing the first stage back at Vandenberg Space Force Base at landing zone four, which is just a short distance from Space Launch Complex 4 East. Now to start the entry burn, we will relight three of the nine Merlin M1D engines, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow the vehicle down to reduce re-entry forces, which then helps us recover and reuse the first stage. During this entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's still moving really fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, that soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. Now, it's this layer of soot that gives Falcon 9 its flight-proven look. Reusability of this kind is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical space infrastructure. The Falcon 9 first stage supporting today's mission is performing this entry burn for the fourth time tonight. The payload fairings, as we mentioned, 
mentioned are also flight proven with one half flying for its 17th time and the other for its fourth time. We should be hearing the call out shortly for entry burn in just about 15 seconds. Now, as a reminder, we will not be sharing any views of our second stage this evening at the request of our customer, and we are currently awaiting views of that first stage on its descent. Stage one, entry burn startup. Good confirmation there of entry burn startup. Now, this is, again, a short burn, and it is designed to slow the vehicle down in preparation for its final landing burn. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. Now coming up next will be that first stage landing burn. Trajectory nominal. And on the way down, Falcon 9 is not only using the M1D engines, but also its four titanium grid fins at the top of the booster for stability and guidance. Stage one, FTS is saved. Good call out there for FTS safe. Now the Merlin M1D engines we've seen firing on that first stage are optimized for sea level performance and they transonic. each achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. So to put that in perspective, Falcon 9 has a combined total thrust of more than five 747 airplanes at full power. Stage one landing burn. Confirmation of landing burn startup. We are now waiting for Falcon 9 to land at landing zone four. Again here, some absolutely stunning views. Keep an eye out for landing leg deployment just prior to touching down at landing zone four. This is the final point. Stage one landing leg deployed. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you heard the call out for a second successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. This stage 2 is under terminal guidance. This was the fourth launch and landing for this first stage booster. As we've mentioned a few times, we won't be showing any stage 2 or deployment views at the request of our customer today. So with that picture-perfect landing of the Falcon 9 booster, we'll be bringing our webcast to a close. We'd like to thank the NRO for entrusting us with today's mission, and we'd also like to thank the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for their support. If you're interested in more launch coverage, be sure to check out spacex.com launches and follow at SpaceX on X for the most up-to-date information. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.